this first video jogcast, we're going to take you on a tour of one of the most famous sites in the world for radio astronomy, Jodrell Bank. And where better to start than atop one of the most iconic landmarks in Britain, the Lovell Telescope. Let's head up now into the dish. Now we're nearly there. It's worth noting this surface above us is the original surface of the telescope. Let's head on. For over half a century, Jodrell Bank has been at the cutting edge of radio astronomy. And yet in 1945, when Sir Bernard Lovell first arrived, it was little more than a few botany huts and some ex-army radar equipment. During the Second World War, Lovell had been experimenting with radar equipment. Uh, and he actually detected echoes which he thought might be cosmic rays coming through the atmosphere. At the end of the war, he took his equipment to the University of Manchester where he studied these echoes further. However, he encountered a problem here because there was a lot of background interference from the city and so he moved out to the Jodrell Bank site, which was owned by the Botany Department. So the site continued to go from strength to strength, but 1947, Lovell and his team had a 218-foot parabolic reflecting aerial, the largest radio telescope in the world at that time. It was also the first to detect an extragalactic signal coming from our nearest neighbour, Andromeda. Then, by 1957, the Lovell telescope behind me was scanning the heavens. Taller than Nelson's column in Trafalgar Square, it's able to move both in elevation and azimuth, meaning it can track an object around the sky. So when the Soviet Union launched their first satellite, Sputnik 1, in October 1957, the Lovell telescope was the only instrument capable of tracking the launch vehicle. This alerted the entire world to just how important and impressive Jodrell Bank had become. But the successes of Jodrell Bank didn't end there. In 1967, this telescope, the Mark II, was built. It was the first telescope in the world to be controlled by a digital computer. Along with the Lovell telescope, it forms part of a bigger project called Merlin. In 1975, construction began to link up seven telescopes from as far apart as Manchester and Cambridge. This separation, some 217 kilometres, allows astronomers to get unprecedented radio images of the cosmos. In fact, the Merlin Array is the only system of telescopes in the world capable of rivaling the Hubble Space Telescope for resolution. So as we've seen, Georgia Bank is still just as involved in radio astronomy as it ever was. With the upgrade from Merlin to E-Merlin, it means that the Lovell Telescope and the other telescopes in the project will be able to reveal details about the universe like never before. So even after 63 years, the site is still pushing the boundaries of radio astronomy. Thanks for listening. And listen, and listen to this. To this.